welcome back to my channel. In this video today I'm going to go over Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas. I did change it up a little bit just to make it a little bit more creepier for Halloween so if you would like to see how to do this then please keep on watching. To start out I'm taking a white eyeliner and mapping out the areas where Sally has her stitched together skin. I'm looking to reference photo here just to get a rough guideline to give myself an idea of where I'm putting it later. I'm then going to take a blue and green cream paint and start to apply that on my skin to get the perfect Sally skin tone. I'm applying that with a brush and just lightly buffing that into the skin all over my face, neck, chest and ears, avoiding my eye area for now just to stop any unnecessary creasing because the eyes tend to do that. So for the collar of the shirt I'm going to be outlining where her clothes are going and then just filling in the remaining area of the skin. I will be body painting on her clothes for this tutorial but if you are wearing this look out I would recommend getting a costume or making your own. The first thing I'm doing is taking a yellow water based paint and applying that on one half of my body. I'm then going to take a purple fuchsia colour and apply that on the other side to create the ripped pattern that is re-sewn together. Once I've got the shirt in place, I'm then going to fill in the remaining of my skin with the blue colour just to give myself that perfect Sally skin tone. Taking that same cream paint, I'm applying that as primer on the tops of my lids only, leaving the bottom nice and blank. You will need to set that all in place to ensure that it doesn't crease. So apply that all of the way over to the lid up into the brow bone and then take a clean blending brush and just buff that all away to give it a nice smooth effect. Once we've got our eyelids ready to go I'm going to take a medium toned blue and start to pack that on the crease and the inner corner of the eye just to give it some slight definition and then I'm going to take a deeper blue and pack that just on the outer V to give it a darker effect. Lining my eyes with a NYX Drummer Pencil in Milk I'm going to heavily apply that on my bottom waterline only buffing that into my lashes just to make sure that I have very bright open dull eyes and also to give it that large eye effect. You will need to lightly blend that out with a brush to get a smooth consistency and then I'm going to apply some shimmery shadow on the centre of my lid only to really open up the top of my lids as well to give myself a very large eye shape. To continue that round eye look I'm taking a liquid liner and filling it in quite heavy with a wing on the outer corner of my eye and also rounding off the top of my lids but applying it thin towards the inner corner. Then take your favourite pair of lashes, I'm just using a really spiky long pair to really open up the eyes. Then I'm taking Jeffree Star's liquid lipstick in the shade Red Rum and applying that quite heavy on my lips, slightly overdrawing them a little bit just to get a very beautiful and luscious lip shape. Now if you have seen the film you might have noticed that Sally doesn't have eyebrows. What I'm doing here is just taking some deep blue cream paint and lightly running that through my brows just to fill in any sparse areas that I naturally have. I definitely didn't want them to look filled in, almost kind of just a shadow brow if that's even a thing because I wanted this to be more of a glam look. Moving on to contouring, I'm taking a royal blue and starting to apply that where you would regularly apply contour and blush, just buffing that into the sides of my cheeks to give myself some colour, also applying that down the sides of my nose just so I can kind of even out my face a little bit and to shorten my nose. I'm also applying that around my neck and chest area just to give Sally some colour and then I'm going to take a white cream makeup to start highlighting, starting with the tip of my nose and the centre of my face, then going around underneath my eyes, centre of my forehead and my chin. Then I'm just going to lightly buff that in with a brush just to get everything nice and flawless and highlighted. Taking a green eyeshadow, I'm using this two shade in the side of the yellow shirt. I'm going to apply that all around the border of the shirt down the seam as well and also start to pull it towards the centre to give it some crinkles and wrinkles as if the shirt was really being worn. To give that more texture I'm taking a sea sponge and an orange face paint. Looking back at the footage now I'd probably use a brown just to get it a little bit more intense but I was still happy with the texture that it gave. Repeating that same process on the other side except I'm using a deep maroon colour to shade all of the areas and give it texture. Then I'm going to go over that with a black face paint and sea sponge and repeat the same process. Once all of the body paint is dry, I'm taking a black eyeshadow and popping that around the edges of the shirt. This is going to give it shading to make it appear like it's actually being worn and giving a shadow on the skin. I also applied that down the centre of the chest where the seam line would be, where the two pieces of fabric are meeting. To map out Sally's stitches, I'm using that same black eyeshadow on that brush and just applying it in the areas looking at a reference photo. I kind of changed it up a little bit on the face. I applied one extra coming down from her eye and I extended the neck just a little bit down into the collar of the shirt. Once I've got all of her stitches set out, I'm going to take a black water based paint and start to go over the edges of the shirt just to make it look more defined and outlined. I'm also going to apply some little stitches 
just to make the shirt look like it is stitched onto Sally's skin. On one half of her shirt, Sally has some spiral patterns on the maroon side, so I'm lightly applying those in quite a wobbly motion just to get more of an uneven texture. It is going to be a shirt, so it will be sitting on the skin. It won't be sitting flat, so having that all wobbly is going to make it look more realistic. I then just went over and dirtied it up a tiny bit more. Now taking a maroon cream paint, I'm applying that over the lines where Sally's stitches are. This is going to create a perfect bruising tone, so I'm going to lightly tap that out to get some bruising and some irritated effects on the skin. Once you've got all of your bruising tones in place, you will need to redefine the lines. I took a red water-based paint and applied that straight over the top where the stitches are going to be laying, just to create a nice blood-toned cut. Of course, when working with water-based paints, you need to ensure that that is completely dry before moving onto your silver stitches. And then taking a Snazaroo silver face paint and applying two coats to get a really pigmented effect of the silver staples or stitches that are holding Sally back together. I'm going to be applying those in X's and in line shapes all throughout all of the cuts that she has to hold her beautiful skin together. I'm then going to take some blue eyeshadow and start to define the lower lash line just to give it more of a smoky look. And using that same blue shadow, I'm popping little dots around each of the corners of the staples to make it appear like it has been stitched into the skin and it is going deep into a hole. So after that is done across all of the entire edges, you can then go ahead and start to define the staples individually. I took a black eyeshadow and a fine detailing brush and started to just lightly outline the corners and the edges to make them look overlapping and to give them some slight shading around the border as if it was coming out from the skin. Once all of the shading is in place, this is the completed beauty portion of Sally. It's a very popular look and this Glam Sally is perfect for Halloween. Super easy and super pretty with a little bit of gore at the same time. Now I did paint my hands to finish off the costume, but if you're here for the gore like I am, of course I'm going to add some blood in there. So I took a blood gel from Mayron and started to run that down, dripping it from different areas of my face, around the sides of my lips, up onto my eyebrow, bringing it down to my eye and kind of just applying that everywhere so she looks all bleedy and stitched back together and super gory. Because if you think about it, if you were torn apart and then sewn back together, you would definitely have some blood. I then went in with some black eyeshadow and gave myself some light ombre effect. I also started to shade underneath the outer corners of my eyes and pull down with that black eyeshadow some little veins to give her more of a creepy and dead look because hey, it is Halloween. After I've got all of that in place, I'm going to take a brush with that same blue paint and lightly tap it to make it appear underneath Sally's skin and that is a complete gory look. That's it guys, that is the end of my video. I hope you all enjoyed my version of Sally. If you'd like to see Jack, please give this video a very big thumbs up and I can definitely make that happen for you. I wanted to say thank you to all of you for your support, for helping me grow and for showing me that this is my passion and that this is what I want to do. I just hit 400,000 subscribers and honestly I never thought I would be here. I always started this out as a hobby and I just wanted to say thank you. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Become part of the family. I upload weekly body paint and special effects videos here on my channel so I hope to see you guys in my next one. Bye!